Hi Flossoup. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ingeborg. And my channel name is A Stitch Too Far. Um, it is last weekend of July and I have some things to talk to you about concerning stitching. So I heard that I'm not allowed to say that my video might be long <laughs> because you might as well assume it will be long. So yeah, G grab a drink. <laughs> uh, so I have some fully finished objects. I have uh, all new starts. I'm not showing you anything in my traditional whip rotation because as I mentioned my rotations on vacation um, yeah how you've all been doing I hope you had a wonderful two weeks I had a bit of a different two weeks than I had planned because I had planned to have a week off when the walk of the world was going on but then as it always does something came up for my work and I needed to get some work in. So I did. So actually I haven't seen basically anything of the walk of the world this year, which is not usual. And also I was planning to go to some uh, concerts, but then things happened. <laughs> so yeah, nothing. And that means that my vacation week was a bit of a weird week, so I decided to have a day off this week. And I spent it finishing some things. Some things that have been laying around for a while and some things that I have recently finished. Um, before I show you what I have been doing, uh, there was a question, two questions, maybe more, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but do I remember from Chris? Uh, she asked me how, how long I've been stitching and I was really trying to think back and I think I've been stitching now since 2012 but I'm not entirely sure. Might have been 2013 even, might have been, yeah. No, to 2012 probably. But yeah, so not that long. Uh, I don't come from a crafty family. My mother did sew some of our clothes when we were kids. But yeah, other than that, I, I did sew some clothes for my dolls, but just basic things. Other than that, I had no experience with embroidery or any kind of crafty thing, knitting or whatever. Well, I did do some knitting, but that's just the things you learn at school when you are, I think it's called primary school, not sure, until the age of 12. But yeah, um, so yeah, not that long. And I feel like I have to catch up. <laughs> um, and Orietta asked me if I could show a picture of the design that I bought from my LNS, the long pattern that made me think of India. And I was at my LNS yesterday. yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me. So I asked if I could make take a picture, and I did. And I might insert it here or otherwise at the end of the video. Um, what else? Coffee. Uh, so, I'm contemplating if I'm going to start with the finishes or start with the... Yeah, I'm going to start with the finishes. So, I had some pieces that I had finished. One I finished at Christmas and one I finished somewhere in springtime and one I finished, two I finished recently. And uh, since I had a day off, I decided I'm going to finish, finish them. So here's what I did. I made uh, this piece into a flat fold and this is Fleece Navidad by Victoria Sampler. 
I had some of the same fabric left from uh, the, the wall hanging with the Christmas tree that I did recently. But yeah, this is um, how it looks. And I decided not to put any hanging on it because I found these. They are uh, painter's easels, but they are used to display small things and this actually fits on it. So I decided, well, I'm just going to use it like that, sit it down like that and that's be it. But I did um, think of maybe embellishing it in the corners with some little bells or something, but not sure yet. But this one is technically finished. Then I had the uh, pulled thread piece uh, from the book. I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> uh, Beginner's Guide to Pulled Thread or something like that. Um, and I decided to finish this as a wall hanging. So I just added a cording around the edge. So this is hanging and I thought I might add a bit of lace around the edge, but I don't want to distract from the piece. So for now I'm keeping it like this. And yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, so thank you Vonna for the excellent tutorial as always. And then I decided it was time to try making pillows. And I had the piece that I did in memory of Beverly. And I have I found some fabric that was excellent for it. So I made it into a pillow. Again, with the help of Vonna's tutorial. And <laughs> I need to work on finishing my, uh, how do you call it? Hidden stitch, ladder stitch, not sure, but it's not perfect. But yeah, for my first pillow, I'm really pleased. I found this uh, trim fabric with lettering on it. And now it sits in my little shelf, which I'll show as well. And then <coughs> I started this with a lot of glare. La -di da cherry picker. I think I showed you that I got this recently. And I was planning on stitching it like this. And in the end I stitched it like this. And I wasn't too happy with the colors because they are a bit drab. They're a bit primitive. And I didn't really like them. So I have done a color conversion which I will share with you. So the cherries are done in... Classic Colorworks Razzleberry. Uh, all the dark colors for the bird and in the basket are done with Simply Shaker, Gentle Arts Espresso Bean. And then I only had DMC colors, so for the green leaves I used DMC 3347 and 3362. And for the basket, I used uh, 738 and 167. And then for the lettering, because I didn't want it to stand out too much, I used 453. And this is very close to the fabric color that I use, which is Rocky Mountain by Geo Designs, X Geo Designs on Etsy. And here's my finish <laughs> and I'm really pleased with how this turned out so all the changes as I said I everything from down here I didn't do and I did change all the colors and I really like that this does show but it's not too too obvious and I added my initials here from the pattern, well, because there's an alphabet in the pattern, I use that to um, add my initials over here. 
But yeah, I really like it. Oh yeah, and I was at a hobby shop and I they have an, happened to have this laying on the counter and I thought that's perfect, I'll buy one. It wasn't, it was only 40 cents or something. So I thought that would be fun to add. And I didn't add anything on the edges because I was going to, but then I thought it's quite busy already. So let's just leave it like this. And then I use this fabric on the back. And this time I did not as bad. <laughs> Still not a great hidden stitch, but yeah. And I have a question because I did notice that it does... Uh, it, it, it isn't straight and I'm not sure if that is because it's a rather big uh, pillow and that's just how that happens because I've seen people with really straight sides and I was wondering if my either I understuffed it or if it's just uh, the size and yes I know the corners aren't exactly square but yeah I didn't have a pokey thing <laughs> I tried to find a pokey thing, but I couldn't find anything. I have a lot of chopsticks, but they're all like beginner chopsticks with a flat top. So they're quite thick. So yeah, and I wasn't going to use... The uh, only thing I could find that was pointy were pencils and I wasn't going to risk coloring <laughs> my piece. So yeah, and these two sit in my version of a dough bowl so i just found this for cheap and i had this this stuffing thing from i don't know some bottle of wine or something that i got so they fit in here like that yep i love it so now i can finally put these away but yeah i really enjoyed this i might stitch it again someday for someone i don't know it was a really fun easy pattern no complaints yeah so that and then let's see i did uh, finish the beading on my scissor fob that i showed you last time but I forgot to take it out, so next time maybe. And, and then all I did was start new things. <laughs> and uh, before I show you, I might as well show you things that I got in the mail finally, because I told you last time that I had a book, book voucher. So I got some books in. Dahlia. This would look familiar to you Egyptian sampler and let me just say that the internet pictures of this 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 magazine or booklet don't do it justice <coughs> because I really thought the colors would be a lot more faded but they're not but I am I am probably going to redesign this because I'm not really fond of these two guys over here and I have several Egyptian profile heads from Ross Originals that I want to do. So I'm thinking to redesign it so that I can incorporate those. But yeah, that will be something far in the future probably. But yeah, I, did, I, I, I managed to get it. Then Tash made me buy this. Cruel Intentions by Hazel Blomkamp. She's a South African cruel embroiderer. And Dash showed me this on one of her videos, or me, us. And it is absolutely stunning. I love it and I really want to try it out. Just showing you a few samples. There are, I think, about seven, seven projects in here. And they are beautiful. And I'm scared. <laughs> so for now, I'm just, I'm just looking through this every now and then. 
and thinking about which one I would dare to start. But yeah, at least I have it now. And then I, I have this because Emily made me do this. And as you can see, I've this is chock full of all kinds of uh, traditional sampler motifs and bands. Love it. And I've been looking through it to find something to replace the alphabet in Death by Cross Stitch. And as you see, I have many possibilities which I need to have a look and chart out and see how it looks with the whole picture of Death by Cross Stitch. But yeah, so lots of reading fun there. And now let's just show what I have been stitching on. I have four new starts. Well, actually, technically five because the cherry pick that picker was a new start, but that I finished. Some are very little or small. Um, I'm going to do it like this. Bees Needlework. It's an online British designer. This is a uh, the tree of stitches. I can't show you the picture because it's all it's the pattern. Uh, but yeah, it's a tree of stitches and it has all kinds of specialty stitches. And I mentioned one or two videos ago that I finally found the fabric that I want to stitch it on. And I have actually started it. This is the tree trunk. I started this in the train going to a meeting in the evening when I was supposed to have holidays. But yeah, <laughs> uh, so this is on... Witchell Summer Sky, 28 count, and I cut it a little bit too generously, but yeah, anyway, but yeah, this was the only thing I, I, I started it because I needed something, I wanted something for the train, because it was an evening meeting and I didn't want to work in the train. And I had only things for 40 count and I wasn't comfortable with stitching on the train on 40 count because it's quite bumpy anyway. So this I had to start just for that. And let's go that here. And then we have, let's see what's in here. Oh yeah, a Kathy Barrick piece that I started, which I picked up earlier this year in the craft fair that I went to. Uh, good intentions. I'm stitching it this with the MPI silks because I wanted to try them out. They're nice but nothing special for just, just like any silk basically to me. But yeah they're nice and <laughs> I stitched this on the balloon. I'm stitching this on the balloon. The one that I said was too orange last time. I still think it's very orange, but for this, it's actually it actually works really well. Oh, um, and I got a lot done on this. I just need the wording on the top. Um, it stitched up pretty fast because I, as you can see there are quite a lot of blocks of color. This was the most fiddly bit to do, but yeah, it was fine. Um, I did make some slight changes. I gave her some lipstick because, there's a, oh, sorry about the thread. You're supposed to stitch her lips in gray <laughs> and yeah. Um, I don't mind gothic, but that's a bit too goth for me. And I gave the dog a red uh, neck leash, or what do you call that? Thing around his neck, instead of a black one. And you're supposed to stitch a letter A in here, and the, the color is supposed to be black, I think. But yeah, I just used that to add my initials and the year, and I made a thread, a red thread. Because black can be boring. But yeah. 
Really enjoying this. The MPI silks are fun to work with. I think it looks perfect on the doubloon. So I might be converting or changing my opinion on that. <laughs> oh, and one other thing. Um, I learned something. I'm not using Bowen needles on this because it was a pain to stitch with the Bowen needles on 40 count picture this plus. And I couldn't figure out why. And it's probably because Bowen needles have a slightly thicker needle's eye than the needle shaft is. So I had uh, some John James petites that Yohita sent me in a giveaway. I thought, well, I might as well try and see if that helps. And that was perfect. They just slid right through. So I've been stitching this with John James needles, actually. And as I mentioned, I was at my LNS yesterday. So I bought, because the petites are <laughs> really petite and my fat fingers are having trouble with them. Um, so I bought regular John James and they are fine as well. So lesson learned for picture this plus 40 count. It is quite dense and I was talking to my LNS owner about if she's had experience with that. And she said it might have been that some fabrics, when you rinse them, the fiber sort of relaxes and sort of expands, which is, which is what is going on here because it's quite dense. You can't really see holes in it. So that's another reason why you need magnifiers for this, but yeah. So she said that was probably the case because it's hand dyed. So it's been washed a lot of times, although with the uh, fabrics from Judah Science, I don't have that problem. I can stitch perfectly fine, actually with a 26 Bowen needle on 40 counts. So must be a different dyeing process or something, but yeah. Lesson learned, now I have some John James, if I want to use picture this plus 40 count. But just something I thought I'd mention. Anything else? Yeah, no. Did that. Then, I just started this. Yesterday, evening, late, uh, antique Celtic sampler, Elizabeth Needleworks designs. You've seen this on Stephanie, Lini Stitches, and someone else is doing it, or has it in the stash. Not sure. One or two people. Anyway, I thought I would start it because I, I could, and I did. And I'm using the recommended threads, but I already am changing some bits up because, yeah, that pink. No, I don't, I don't understand why that pink is in there. So that is going to be substituted for something. Not sure yet what, but it will be. For the rest, I don't mind the blues and the purples and the greens. I like them. I think it suits me and it suits the pattern and I want what I want for it. Anyway, um, this is my meager start. And this again is on the same fabric as the cherry picker, which is Rocky Mountain by Jew Designs, 40 count. Love this. And I actually wanted it to have this extreme modeling. So I made another generous cut in my fabric because I wanted to have it in it. It's not going to be big. This is the whole width and it's going to be about up to here. So it's not, not that big on 40 count. But yeah, enjoying it. And then, oh, by the way, this is the Rocky Mountain fabric. <laughs> What's left over from it. It's this is actually very close to the real life color. It's not at all yellow. It's gr it's more of a greenish tint to it. Greenish brown. Anyway, enough of that. Then the thing I have been in love with for the past two weeks. 
and it's a fish. <laughs> and uh, I think I mentioned, I don't, I'm not sure if I started it previously. Not sure, but <laughs> I'm on my way to finishing it. Um, so this is Aboriginal art by Ross Originals, Graham Ross from Australia. Uh, this is Barramundi, this is long neck, long neck Tortoise, so that's two designs in one. And I'm working on the Barramundi, or someone on Instagram called it the fish that swallowed the football which I'm guessing is an American football, but yeah, I can see why. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I am so in love with this. In love with a fish. And again, it's being a bit washed out, the green. But... Yeah, and I have a new technique I'm learning. The, can you see these bits over here? They are cross hatched in long stitch. So there are several places where I'm required to do that cross hatching. So with one color going one way in long stitch and then a different color going on top of that in the opposite direction, which has a really interesting effect and uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if I, how, how I was feeling about it. I wasn't sure to start it, but I, I, I finally did. <laughs> because all over here, there's supposed to be not cross hatching, but long stitches as well. And I wasn't sure how long I could make my long stitch without it getting uh, sort of loose. But yeah, so far it's good. And it's a long stitch, so it's not a satin stitch, so I'll show you the back, because you see a long stitch always uh, goes back on the same side. Well, I, I made some errors here with the satin stitch, but because uh, with a satin stitch you go in on one end and go underneath and pull it through to the other side and come up. And then go on top and go back to the other side and go down again. With the long stitch you go up on one side and you go down on the other and then move over and come on back up on the same side and go back and then move over and come up on the same side and go back. So that's why on the back it should be empty. Although here I made an error and made some satin stitches because I'm used to making satin stitches with that one among others. So yeah, really having fun with this. It's only four colors and I'm still amazed at how they are turning out. And there's one other thing that I have noticed with this and I'm trying to see if you can see it. Because I can see a bit of a different color effect going on on those sides. Those are lines of black crosses and orange crosses. And I did all the black outlining first. And then I went back and did all the filling in with the orange. And I worked from this way to that and back and this way to that and back. And on the other side I worked from this way to that and back. Which means that my top leg of my cross, on one side it will go from top to bottom. And on the other side it will go from bottom to top because of the way I, the direction I was stitching in. And I noticed that it makes a slight change in color and you can see it more if I, if, I, if I look at it from an angle, I can see it better. And I, have, I never noticed that before. It's not very obvious when you're looking straight on, but I did make a little clip of it, which I will try and insert to try and show you. And if it, if it doesn't show up, then I won't. So. It's either going to be here or it's not. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm working on my obsession, otherwise known as Baramundi by Ross Originals. And I was, I did a lot of the outlining in black first and then filling in with the colors. And I noticed something that I thought I would share with you and maybe 
someone has an explanation for it because if you look at this pattern the black lines with the orange fill in um, I notice something when I look at it from an angle and I'm gonna try and see if it shows up on camera so I am going to tilt the camera okay I don't I'm not sure if it's showing up but if you look over here on a tilt yeah it's showing up like not better now if you see over here the black is more dominant and here the orange is more dominant can you see and I'm thinking this has to do with the way I do my top stitch or something because I stitched I think I stitched this side going like this and, and back and over here I stitched going like this and then back I wonder if that has something to do with it of course the direction of my top stitch is the same but I think on one side I would have probably started from the top going down and here from the bottom going up but I'm not sure anyone has had this before and knows if it's to do it with the way I stitch or if it's just I don't know some kind of tension difference or something I would be very interested to know because it was really odd when I noticed it for the first time anyway bye guys anyway um so yeah this is the fish that i'm in love with that i want to marry and have no not have babies with <laughs> but yeah i am um, I, I just can't this is one of the things that you think oh maybe another row of things or maybe fill in this bit or because it's all sort of little parts that you can just keep going at and keep adding to uh, absolutely love it yeah so um, this is on another of Judesign's fabrics this is oil green and uh, I have enough I ordered a fat quarter and I have enough to do the long neck turtle one on the bottom part but I am not sure if I'm uh, when I'm going to do that I'm definitely going to finish this and then see if I want to keep going or need a break but yeah, so in love with this. So that's all that I have been working on. And now I have to check my notes because... Oh yeah, what happened there? Oh yeah, there it is. Um, because there are some public service announcements that I need to make, I think. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the coming month because I have consciously decided that I wasn't going to stitch on any of my whips. But now I have 13 <laughs> whips, which kind of makes me nervous. But some of them are close to finish. So, but the, my old regular whips aren't calling to me yet so I'm, I'm i'm thinking i'm going to stick with this for a bit and see where i end up if i end up in a loony bin because i don't know how on earth i'm ever going to finish anything but i am still feeling the need to start things because uh yeah because i don't know why <laughs> But I know I'm not the only one because I've heard other people say too that they have been wanting to start things. So let me check my notes. Oh, yeah. There's one thing I needed to talk about and that is uh, two things. I went to my LNS yesterday to confirm about the last weekend of August and the plans to have a little stitching meet up and uh, that is still on uh, I have had about seven responses of people who are saying they are definitely coming or are planning to try and come uh, but most of them have mentioned that they will only be available on Saturday 
So I have been thinking about that and I discussed it with my LNS and uh, basically we will have the meeting in uh, the LNS on Saturday on the date and hour that I specified and I will be emailing all of you that have emailed me on the on this mail address that I'm going to put down here because I think it's weekend in paradise at something but <laughs> I forgot <laughs> I'll put it here so if you're still interested and you want to want to apply or let me know that you are planning on coming please mail me on that mail address uh, if you haven't already I will be mailing those who have responded by mail to give them some more information but my plan now is that on Saturday we will meet up at the LNS and on Sunday the few of those that are, are wanting to get together and, and are available to get together I think there's only two or three not completely sure um, but I will just pick you up and take you to my place and we will stitch in my home if that's okay um, that's uh, it uh, if you are interested in learning more about what the weekend is please check my uh, previous video on that it has something like weekend in paradise I will try and add the link in the description box to make it convenient for you to find it but yeah if you're uh, interested in let me know and I will see uh, when we have had it how people have enjoyed it and maybe do another one somewhere uh, in the fall maybe or in early spring I'm not sure because um, as I, I think I mentioned after September it usually gets really busy for my LNS that they have to go to lots and lots of uh, fairs and markets and things like that so they just pick up, pack up their whole inventory and close the shop for a few days and go to that fair or whatever so that that means it would be impossible to uh, get together on uh, so the dates that the shop will open will be limited in a period of the end of the year beginning of the next year so but if there is enough interest in um, people if people enjoyed it then I will definitely try and do it again and um, maybe you can come too anyway I'm starting to ramble uh, but I did oh yeah I need to pause because I I, for, I forgot to grab something and I wanted to talk about it so pause and we're going again because I've mentioned already a thousand times that I went to my LNS yesterday because of praise of the needle I have been thinking and thinking and thinking about what I wanted to do about the colors and you've all mentioned th very kindly that you all think that the color is lovely oh gosh and I I think I agree I think I don't mind the colors but I do think it's very busy because there are a lot of color changes or very drastic color changes in this so I have decided that I was going to look and see if I could find some colors that might be a bit less drastic but that would complement it and maybe I could use those um, for some of the other bands and I did find two so I'm not sure if and how I'm going to use them, but I am planning to. This is a, uh, what's it called? Hofvijver. So it's uh, like a pond. It is showing up like cobalt blue, but it's really a navy blue with some really pine green bluish bits in it. So yeah, that one, 
And this one is a bit much, but I decided to pick it up anyway. This is like a gold and pine green again. So these two, and this one, which is what I'm using, these three actually are a set. She, she especially made this one to complement these. So I figure I might as well give that a try and see where we get. So I might be picking this up again soon. And I'm not supposed to fold it in the same way. <laughs> so here we go. And there we go. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share. And of course, while I was there and I, I decided to pick up a bin of her patterns and look through them. Which some may say was a big mistake. <laughs> but I'm going to say it was a great find. Because I got this. Uh, it's by Reflet de Soie, a French designer. It's called, what is it called? Legende Indienne or Indian Legends. And of course the picture isn't great. But it is uh, based on a 16th century Mughal tapestry. North Indian. And... Oh, I saw this and I just, I had to have it because like the long pattern, this, this totally reminds me of Rajasthan. And I love it and it's really strange. It has a lot of tigers in it, tigers attacking cows and some weird elephant bird thing surrounded by small elephants. And I tried to find an online picture because this is not very clear so that I could insert it, but it's, I can't find it anywhere. So I am glad, excuse me, I am really glad that I picked this up because I don't think anyone in the world has this. <laughs> uh, even the site, you know, the original designer, it doesn't show up on their, on their site at all. It is a design from 2004, so it's not that old. And I was looking at this and looking at this and then I realized something. I basically bought a head <laughs> with this because it is 259 by 433 and they advised to be stitched on 36 count over one petit point. So that's basically what I did my Vermeer piece in which was I'm trying to think it was something like 270 by 330 350 something like that oh so not that bad but yeah I am seriously thinking about how I'm going to do this because if I'm going to do this pretty points then Actually, it won't be that big. It will be 18 by 32 centimeters, which is, how much is that? Something like 10 by 18 inches? 20 inches, something like that. Basically, it fits on a fat quarter easily easily so I might have to start this <laughs> no I'm, I'm not gonna start this soon because I have decided that um, this will go on the scroll rods that I am stitching save the stitches on so that will be a while yet but that might be an incentive for me to get to work on save the stitches and finish that but yeah, I just, oh man, I love this. I really, 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 really love this. And I'm crazy. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, um, that's it. Oh, except for the last thing, of course, my Dutch, my just my Dutch something, <laughs> not random fact. Um, 
someone asked if I could talk a bit about traditional food and I'll be glad to. And I'm going to have to make that a series because we actually have like, I think four specific food groups that are sort of traditional or custom over here or people really eat a lot of. So I'm going to do four segments, not all in one video, but I'm going to try and do one each video. So we have just tra tra traditional food, like uh, which I'm going to talk about today. We have um, specific traditional food like pancakes and pea soup that I'm going to talk about in next or uh, next video. Then we have fries uh, and specific foods that we eat when we go to the bar. And we have uh, sort of colonial heritage Indonesian food. So I think those four are really things that a lot of Dutch people eat a lot, generally. So traditional. Traditionally, it's comparable to French kitchen, English, German, whatever. So potatoes, vegetables, some kind of meat. And but we do something <laughs> really disgusting with it, which we call prakken. P R A double K E N prakken, which means that we have our boiled potatoes and our boiled vegetables. Could be Brussels sprouts, could be some kind of cabbage or cauliflower or something like that. We put the boiled potatoes on our plate. We put the vegetables on our plate. We take our fork and we mash everything together like crazy, which we call prakken. And then we uh, uh, pile it up together and make a little hole in the center and we add gravy. And that's how we eat a lot of potatoes and vegetables. And sometimes we save ourselves the trouble to do it on our plate and we do it in the pan. So we make uh, things that we call hutspot or stamppot. I will try and find some pictures for you, which basically is potatoes, some kind of vegetables. Uh, onions cooked all together in one pot and then mashed together and usually we eat that with sausage yeah mainly sausage sometimes fish but yeah so those are our traditional foods <laughs> basically unrecognizable goo really stodgy fills you up yeah that's our traditional food. <laughs> More on the next video. Anyway, I will try and find some pictures and I will clean up this mess. And that's all I have to say today. And I'm happy to say it is being short and sweet, sort of. So yeah, I will see you in two weeks and that will actually be my anniversary. So I have been doing this for a year now. And I think next time I will just do a sort of a th throwback and see because um, Mondot has been uh, giving us a challenge to look back at our pre first videos and say talk about what has changed. I thought that was interesting. Tracy P has asked a similar thing and I don't think I'm going to do that one because I don't know how to film myself uh, responding or reacting to my first videos. So I think I'm going to do the Mondot one, the Diane one. And just talk a bit about things that have changed in my stitching in the last year and how floss tube has impacted my life. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you'll have a wonderful two weeks of stitching or vacation or whatever you're planning to do. I hope you're healthy and 
I will see you in two weeks. Bye, guys.